Should you go to fashion school? The topic of fashion school versus being a self-taught designer is something that I'm asked about a lot on my TikTok and Instagram by young designers trying to decide on their path into the industry. This is an important question to ask yourself. It's definitely not an easy one when facing it on your own, and it certainly leads to a lot of stress when considering the financial risk versus reward. In this video, I will share my own experiences, thoughts, and opinions. I'll be thorough and try to give you the most comprehensive and holistic look at these paths to hopefully give you value for your time. So this won't be a short and cursory video. So go grab some coffee or some tea and some paper so you can take notes if you want. First, I'll tell you a little bit about my experience and background. I received a bachelor's in fashion design from a state university, not a fashion school. I then earned a master's in couture design from a fashion school in Italy. Now I work in the fashion industry in New York as a designer. During school, I completed three separate internships in different areas of the industry, and I gained a lot of value from those experiences. Therefore, my main perspective is that of someone who did receive a formal fashion education. However, while earning my bachelor's, I was also conducting my own self-studies after classes most days. I was trying to learn everything I possibly could about the industry, but I felt I wasn't being taught in my courses. I had the mindset that the students at Parsons and FIT, all those like top fashion schools, they were probably working a lot more than I was and learning a whole lot more than I was in my classes. So I, I needed to go above and beyond to make up for my non-traditional fashion education being at just a state school. So I do have a little bit of a hybrid education, that mix of self-taught and school. So that's a bit about me. Now let's analyze the pros and cons of fashion school versus self-taught. The first benefit of fashion school is that you have a structured learning environment. For people who have a hard time structuring their own curriculum and you just need that set schedule in your life to stay productive, this is a huge benefit to fashion school that might be very challenging to implement on your own. In a fashion bachelor's program, at least in the US, you'll have to complete the basic requirements, you know, your math, sciences, and history before getting into the more fashion specific courses. This will give you the traditional like well-rounded education. So you still have some skills beyond just designing fits. But when you get to the fashion courses, you'll be taking fashion history, which is one of my favorites, uh, sewing and pattern making, draping, fashion drawing and rendering, maybe collection development, computer aided design, where hopefully you'll learn about Illustrator and Photoshop and Clo 3D. You might take some merchandising courses and most importantly, if you want to be a designer, textiles. Beyond that, you'll get your first summer internship, which your school will often help you find. And internships are invaluable, but you likely won't get paid for it. So you'll need to factor in that cost. A bachelor's program will provide you with the curriculum and structure to learn the fundamentals of working in this industry. At the end of your bachelor's, you'll make and present your collection. And honestly, your bachelor's collection probably won't be very good. Most aren't, that's okay. Looking back at mine, it wasn't great. But that's okay because at the end of your bachelor's, you just don't have the experience, taste level, and knowledge to create a really compelling and thoughtful collection. You still have a lot to learn. I definitely did and I still do. But after a bachelor's degree is when most students try to enter the workforce. And it's a huge challenge to just get a design job straight out of college. This is a very competitive industry. And if you aren't at a top school like Parsons, you're at a disadvantage because of the access to resources and networking that top fashion schools have, which we'll talk about in a bit. Another route you can take after your bachelor's is going for a master's like I did. That was the best option for me because I wanted to be challenged and pushed to become a better designer. And I wanted the structure of a master's program to literally and figuratively push me to my limits. A lot of leaders in the fashion industry earned a master's from Central St. Martin's, Parsons, FIT, and other great schools. Alexander McQueen and Alessandro Michele are just two examples of successful designers who earned a master's in fashion, Alessandro Michele graduating from the same program that I just did. A master's can help set you apart from the crowd of other recent graduates applying for positions, and there are great one to two year programs to choose from. But the structure and depth of a master's program is much more intense than that of a bachelor's, and the standards are a lot higher, as they should be. In a fashion master's program, you'll likely be taking more fashion history courses, drawing and rendering, draping, and more pattern making, but you do need to have that good knowledge base in these areas before going into a master's. You can't really go in without knowing these skills. In my master's in couture design at Academia Costume and Moda, we were taught how to sew couture lace, couture feathers, create jacquards, plan fashion shows, how to develop a thoughtful and cohesive collection, hand sew corsets and the structures of a dress, and much more. We were being prepared to work in an atelier environment. It was very intense, it was challenging, and it was highly structured, which gave me the tools and professional critique 
to greatly improve my marketable skills so that I could enter the fashion industry as a competitive candidate. So ask yourself if taking these set courses and having a rigid curriculum to follow with other students and professors to support you through it sounds like it would be beneficial to you or you would prefer a more self-guided, relaxed curriculum that you can complete at your own pace. Each option is valid and the best choice for you may not be the best choice for everyone. There's no wrong way to do it. Now for the second pro of going to fashion school, the networking. Wherever you go to fashion school, you will likely have access to local business leaders, alumni working in the industry, professors, and other mentor figures who can help advise and guide you into developing your career. Having mentors and knowing professionals in the industry is truly invaluable in getting a job, but it still won't be easy. I see so many amazingly talented designers not get positions or opportunities because they just don't have the network to get their work in front of the right people. It's not fair and it's not right, but talent alone rarely lands you a job. It does happen, but knowing the right people will fast track you into a career advancing position. And unfortunately, not all fashion schools were created equal. So the access to professionals and mentors at schools like Parsons or Central St. Martins will likely be more prestigious and open more doors than the access a state school may have. But that doesn't mean you have to go to a top school to be able to get a job. There's also so much more competition at those schools for those few available positions. I went to a state school and had access to a great alumni network with high up positions at Nordstrom, Nike, and more. My mentors taught me so much and supported me relentlessly because they saw the passion I have for this industry. And a master's program will increase your networking and mentorship opportunities exponentially. Master's programs often work with large design houses to land their students internships and jobs. There will likely be guest lectures from creative directors or professionals in similar roles. In my program, we did three large industry projects. The first big project was with a jacquard manufacturer in Italy who creates beautiful couture jacquards for all the big luxury houses. And that was a really great way to learn more about couture textiles that few people ever get to see up close. The second industry project was where each of the 17 students in the masters was paired with a couture client to design them a personal collection. There were famous chefs and actresses and models that we were paired with. I was paired with the former senior editor of Marie Claire magazine. I interviewed and got to know him very well and it culminated in a custom design collection based around his needs, wants, and personality. This project gave me the opportunity to network with someone who has a vast network themselves and someone who would give me honest critiques of my work as their knowledge level was way beyond mine. It was an opportunity that I certainly wouldn't have been able to gain on my own. And the third large industry project was a collection for Valentino Couture where we received guidance and critique from the design director himself. We designed around their signature Valentino red color and I ended up designing 200 looks, I'm not exaggerating, and I narrowed it down to the 20 best ones for the collection, which I then presented to that design director. It was honestly an amazing and a thrilling and a very nerve wracking opportunity that was pivotal in developing my confidence as a designer. It's not every day that you get to present your work to the design director of Valentino. Industry projects will vary per school, but they're usually great opportunities to network, land an internship, and expand your skill set at the same time. And at the end of the master's program, you may have the opportunity to present a small collection in the fashion show. The master's fashion show is very different from the bachelor's show. It will likely be attended by creative directors, buyers, press, and it's a great way to get that initial coverage of your work on a potentially global stage. Central St. Martins, for example, presents on the official Fashion Week calendar in London. That's an opportunity designers pay tens of thousands of dollars for that you could possibly get included in your program fees. So you can see how a fashion education, and especially a master's program, can introduce you to powerful people in the industry, from models and actresses to magazine editors and design directors. And many students from my program have landed jobs at Dior, Loewe, Valentino, and Gucci, thanks to the vast network of the school and the skills learned in such an intense program. But while going to fashion school increases your chances of landing a job, it doesn't guarantee it. So it still requires a lot of hard work and persistence on your part. The third pro of going to fashion school is that you will get honest critique of your work. When you ask your friends and family how they like your designs, they'll almost always tell you they love it, which is nice to hear and it boosts our confidence, but it isn't exactly helpful and you won't become a better designer by only hearing great things. And it probably doesn't come as a surprise, but I was a bit of a teacher's pet in school. I was praised a lot by my friends and professors and had a bit of an overinflated ego. However, a couple of my professors did not hesitate to call out my work 
and humble me when I needed to be taken down a notch. They would tell me when my proportions were off on a sketch or if I was manipulating a pattern incorrectly or whatever. They were helpful and constructive. And one of the most valuable lessons I learned in my bachelor's program was in a fashion drawing class when I asked the professor, how can I improve the proportions on one of my croquis? He just looked at me and said, you tell, you tell me, me what's, what's wrong, wrong with, with this croquis. Croquis. I know you're good enough to look at your drawing and to fix what needs to be fixed. And the lesson I learned there wasn't about how to fix my drawing. It was how to self-critique, how to look at my work and know what needed to change. A lesson that can and should be applied to everything you do, whether you go to fashion school or not. The ability to look at your own work and know what needs to be fixed or what skill you need to improve upon fundamentally in order to grow as a designer. Then know how to implement that into your own work. Self-critiquing is an invaluable skill that you should know how to do. And I'm telling you now because it took me a long time to learn. An effective self-critique will take time to gain the knowledge and skill necessary to implement it. So take it slowly and be patient with yourself. Now, depending on your professors and the school you go to, your experience with getting honest, constructive critique will vary. But be honest with yourself about your work and ask your mentors to be honest with you as well. Even if you aren't in fashion school, you can still get constructive criticism from the people around you. And the critiquing method is much different in a master's program. Going into a master's, you're expected to already know the fundamentals of most areas of design, and you'll receive much harsher feedback and will rarely hear praise about your work. I was humbled very quickly when I got to Italy and I was surrounded by amazing designers. In my program, if the professors didn't say anything, that was pretty good. Hearing something positive was rare and only when you really deserved it. When I finally got complimented on a project of mine, I had tears of joy in my eyes because I would often butt heads with the director of the program. And I worked to humble myself and implement his design. Even though I didn't agree with his critiques all the time, I learned to accept his experience in the industry and the value he was giving me by being honest. And I worked to humble myself and implement his advice while staying true to my vision. And you should learn how to do that too if you don't already know how. It took me a long time to learn that. Your professors are there to push you to become a better designer, not to praise your work and tell you how great you are. I wasn't gonna pay all that money to attend one of the best master's programs in the world to be coddled and not pushed to my limit. But during a particularly challenging project, the Valentino one, where almost my entire class was critiqued so harshly to the point where some students were in tears, we were told one of the most valuable lessons I ever learned in all of my schooling, beyond the self-critiquing. We had put so much value on this project, so much time and effort into designing the looks, making the mood boards and all the research around it. But it didn't matter because of this piece of advice. That wisdom was just because you spend a long time on something doesn't make it good. Time does not equal quality. As designers, we often grow very attached to our ideas and our work, and we take any criticism of it as a criticism on ourselves. But learning how to separate our own self-worth from the quality of our art and our passion allows us to realize that spending 100 hours on something doesn't inherently make it good, and that's okay. Because accepting harsh but honest critique gracefully from a professional, a mentor, someone who's been in this industry for decades is one of the first steps to becoming a much better designer. Virgil Abloh, Alexander McQueen, Christian Dior, Balenciaga, all of the big names got there by accepting critique, learning as much as they could, and pushing themselves to become the best. So I can say that one of the huge pros of getting a formal fashion education is that you will be critiqued honestly, solely in an effort to make you better. Can you get critique if you don't go to fashion school? Yes, of course. I would suggest reaching out to professionals and just ask them to give you feedback on your work. Reach out to people on LinkedIn and ask for some critique. Not everyone will respond, but that's okay. Put your work online and ask questions like, why wouldn't you wear this piece? What would you change about this dress, sweater, hat, whatever? Who can you see wearing this? and other guiding questions to get honest feedback. Just asking your friends and family or like an online forum, do you like this? You'll only get non-constructive yes or no responses with not much to be learned about how you can continue to grow as a designer. And once you start seeking out that honest feedback and accepting it without getting defensive, you'll start seeing a major improvement and your ability to design and create impactful collections. Now let's talk about the pros of being a self-taught designer, a path many great creatives took, and a very viable option today with the wealth of knowledge at your fingertips through YouTube and Google and so much more. So the first pro of being a self-taught designer is the cost, a lack of it. When you buy a house, the first thing you'll ask your realtor or look at on the flyer 
is of course the price. Not that I've ever bought a house before, and fa but fashion schools are the same. You gotta consider the price. Especially in the US, fashion schools aren't cheap. If you want a BA at Parsons, for example, that's gonna run you about 27 grand a semester. Just in tuition. It's about 216,000 for four years of study, which doesn't include the cost of living in New York City. And this cost will vary between schools, but art schools are notoriously expensive. So unless you get a lot of scholarships or you're in a fortunate enough situation to not worry about money, going to a fashion school is a huge expense that you won't incur by teaching yourself. But nonetheless, as a self-taught designer, you'll save a lot of money. But there are expenses you still need to consider. You'll need to buy fabric, which can be quite expensive. You'll need pattern making paper and a dress form. Fortunately, dress forms come in a range of prices from $50 to $2,000, depending on the quality you go for. Supplies like pins and measuring tools, paper and fabric scissors, a drafting table, and maybe renting a studio space or just rent wherever you live. And a sewing machine is helpful, However, I have always hand sewed everything I've made and I've never actually purchased a sewing machine. So that expense is optional, but a sewing machine will save you a lot of time. But unless you plan on sewing your own clothes for your collections or want to work in a factory or an atelier, uh, you won't really need to demonstrate sewing abilities to an employer. In the industry, sewing is almost always outsourced. So your digital design skills will be much more marketable than your ability to sew. But we can talk about the skills necessary to get you a job in the industry in another video. This one is long enough. And of course, you might need to pay for some educational resources. Fortunately, there's a ton of free knowledge online. You can access on YouTube, Google Scholar, or the public library. I will continue to post free educational videos, so subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more. But extra expenses can come in the form of buying books because you should be reading as much as possible. Subscription fees or course fees from online courses like on Coursera and stuff. Um, however you choose to conduct your research in your curriculum, you can adjust to your own budget, which is a massive advantage. Unfortunately, it isn't cheap to become a designer either way. You'll have to pay for those supplies if you go to school or not, and the cost of unpaid internships, which are far too prevalent in this industry. The only paid internship I got was through my school. But at least by being a self-taught designer, you won't be incurring tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt, depending on where you go, and you can still get a great education by having discipline in your self-studies. The second pro of being a self-taught designer is that you have the flexibility and independence to design exactly how you want. Learning how to sew, pattern, and drape outside the confines of a formal education can end up teaching you unconventional and innovative ways to design that could set you apart from the crowd and things that you could even build a brand around. Some legendary designers who never went to fashion school are Coco Chanel, who dropped out of school and learned how to sew in a convent. And Karl Lagerfeld, who was hired by Pierre Balmain after his success in a coat designing competition. And one of my favorite designers, Jean-Paul Gaultier, who just sent his sketches to stylists and ended up impressing Pierre Cardin, who hired him as an assistant and jump-started his career. Many successful designers have never had a fashion education, yet they still completely revolutionized the industry anyway. They were free to design how they wanted, exactly to their vision. And maybe if they had went to fashion school, they wouldn't have achieved the same level of success. Fashion school may even be stifling to an incredibly creative person who also has the discipline to execute their vision and the business acumen to turn their work into a profitable business. So if you choose not to go to fashion school, you're in great company of amazing designers who also had non-traditional paths into the industry. But it will take a lot of discipline, dedication, passion, and just plain old hard work to get into the industry in the first place. A word I keep saying throughout this video, if you've noticed, is is discipline. And that really is a very important trait to have and to keep working on if you want to work in fashion. Having discipline in your studies, in your schedule, in your work ethic, values, and design vision is essential to success. Before studying fashion, I spent two years pursuing pre-med in college. The hardest class I think I took before switching paths was organic chemistry. I would study for that class probably about five to six hours a day most days because it just didn't come naturally to me. I don't know if organic chemistry really comes natural to anybody, but I wanted more than anything to get an A in that class. And long story short, all that hard work and consistent practice helped me earn a 96 on one of my tests in that class. I was ecstatic and so proud of myself. I passed that class with an A and I learned discipline. And after switching paths into the fashion program, I quickly learned that while the content of my fashion classes was easier, than the content in my STEM classes, at least for me. The time commitment and discipline needed to create a collection, learn the ropes, and actually work in the industry was just as difficult as building a career in a STEM field, and in many cases, even more difficult. I might get some flack for saying that, but 
speaking my truth. Working in fashion is not glamorous and nothing is guaranteed, but the discipline which I started developing in my STEM courses and continued to grow and develop well into my fashion education became essential to landing that job. I sent out 96 applications before landing my first internship. I applied for 111 jobs before getting hired. For you, if you choose to be a self-taught designer, you can learn that discipline on your own. Setting a routine, keeping a schedule, pushing yourself to improve a little bit each day, and stay on top of your studies. Self-critique. Find a mentor who will give you honest, educated feedback and learn how to humbly accept that feedback and implement it into your work. This is a recipe for becoming a disciplined designer and having the freedom to develop your own projects and collections without a rubric or a grade to chase. It'll allow you to grow exactly how you want and to do it all on your own time. The flexibility and sense of independence you'll have as a self-taught designer is definitely one of the advantages over attending fashion school. The third pro to being a self-taught designer is that you can build a portfolio of work you're truly passionate about. Each project you do, each collection you design can be something true to yourself and geared exactly towards the section of the industry you want to work in. Building a portfolio is essential to landing a job, and each page of your portfolio should make an impact and showcase your work. And with a self-guided education, you won't have to worry about doing group projects you aren't passionate about and filling precious space in your portfolio with work you aren't absolutely proud of. When going to fashion school, you often only have time to do the projects they plan for you. And at the end of the course, you're forced to choose between those projects to present in your portfolio. Often, this can lead to a portfolio without focus because schools wanna give you a well-rounded, diverse education. And there's nothing wrong with a diverse education, but if you know that you only wanna do menswear suiting, for example, then that project you did in school designing women's athleisure won't do much to help you out and you shouldn't show that to a company. Self-directed study allows you to focus as much or as little as you want on different subsections of the industry. And you can really hone in and focus your skills to become an expert in that area. And if you already know exactly what you wanna do, and fashion school may not be for you. Some areas you can focus on if you don't exactly know what's out there yet. Um, there's men's and women's knitwear, tailoring, athleisure, athletic and performance wear, kids wear, uh, textile design, pattern making, uh, technical design, denim design, accessories, shoes, and a whole lot more. And when you find that area you really want to focus on, start creating self-directed projects from concept and inspiration to sketchbooking, designing, and the creation of a look or piece from that collection. Photograph your whole process from beginning to end and present it thoughtfully in a portfolio. A portfolio should contain two to three of your best projects with concise imagery from concept to completion. Beyond three projects and the level of quality will start to go down. And the person looking at your portfolio probably doesn't have a very big attention span and they're getting through like a hundred so keep it brief and not attending fashion school means that it's unlikely you'll ever hear this information from someone else which is why I'm trying to make this video so thorough and when applying to a job that you think you'd love design a small capsule collection for that brand and to send them ahead of your interview nine out of ten times no other applicants will do that and if you don't have the connections to land that job you need to stick out and make the biggest impact you can with your portfolio and your interview. Your willingness to go above and beyond to get that position will be apparent, and your chances of getting a call back will increase exponentially. If you want to hear more about building a fashion portfolio and how to make a statement to hopefully land that job, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video on portfolio building as well. So as a self-taught designer, you're able to focus your portfolio and spend a lot of time developing amazing projects that are highly specific to the career path you want to go down. Whereas in fashion school, you'll likely be doing a variety of diverse projects so you get a taste of everything, which is great and you learn a lot, but it leads to a less focused portfolio when you graduate. So there are all the pros, which of course isn't an exclusive list, but I think they're pretty important ones. But now, what are the cons of fashion school? Don't worry, this section will be much shorter because we've already talked a bit about the cons throughout the video so far. The first con is, of course, the price. Fashion school, the supplies needed, and the cost of living in a fashion capital 
if you go to one of the major schools, is a huge expense and isn't possible for everyone. The second con of fashion school is the time and pace of your courses. Some people need to take things at a slower pace, and that's okay. A fashion bachelor's program goes at a decent pace, make your collection, and you might just end up crying on the floor under your sewing machine after inserting a lining inside out, and your collection is due in 10 hours. Ask me how I know. And a master's program is at a breakneck pace. High stress and seemingly impossible deadlines where even if you and all your classmates beg for an extension, you'll just be laughed at and told, you know, you think this is bad? Wait until you get a job in the industry. But you know what? They were right. A job is worse with tighter deadlines and more at stake. And the third con of going to fashion school is simply the risk. Many people graduate from fashion schools and are either unprepared to get a job in the industry because they didn't learn the required skills, or they just can't find a job because the market is too rough and the job listings all have 200 plus applications. Then they might end up working in a field unrelated to fashion, but even that's difficult to find because most fashion degrees don't exactly prepare you to work in other industries. There's absolutely nothing wrong with switching career paths at any point. I switched into fashion and a lot of people will likely switch out of fashion because of the difficulty and the commitment associated. The burnout rate is very high. Going to fashion school comes with financial and career risks and could limit your job opportunities due to the non-transferable skills you learn in a lot of fashion degrees. Now that we know the cons of going to fashion school, what are the cons of being a self-taught designer? The first con is of course the lack of a clear path into the industry. Getting a job in fashion isn't easy, even if you do go to fashion school. But fashion school provides you with a structured curriculum, internships, and networking opportunities that are significantly harder to get without the backing of that school and their alumni network. As a self-taught designer, you likely won't strike gold with your own brand, and you'll need to look at getting a 9 to 5 to support your creative endeavors. You could get lucky and land a job quickly, especially if you're able to leverage any connections you have in the industry, but I applied to 111 jobs before getting hired. If having a formal education and a master's doesn't guarantee a job quickly, having no formal education could lead to some serious difficulties, as most fashion jobs require an education or equivalent experience. The second con to being a self-taught designer is not developing the discipline, experiences, and skills required to be in the industry. It's very easy when you have no deadlines to become complacent and just let time pass by without accomplishing much. Working in fashion requires a large amount of discipline and hard work, and not many people have that level of discipline to consistently guide themselves in high-quality, self-directed study. And while not being confined to traditional fashion techniques and methods as a self-taught designer, it can be easy to fall into incorrect methods and habits that detract from the quality of your work and will limit your ability to advance in your career. If a recruiter looks at your portfolio and sees poor fitting clothes, technical sketches that don't make sense, designs that don't lend themselves to the fabrics, uh, they can very easily pass over your application. So to be a successful self-taught designer, you must have a great amount of discipline and work ethic, and you need a good foundation to learn the correct ways of doing things so that you can strategically deviate and craft your own unique style. You need to know the rules to break them effectively. And the third con to being a self-taught designer is the lack of competition you'll face every day. In a classroom environment, especially in a master's program, there's a large amount of friendly competition. When you're looking at your classmates' work on presentation days, you're silently sizing yourself up to them to see how you compare. And while you shouldn't be discouraged by others, or try to be or design like anyone else, you should be looking at other people's work and getting inspired to push yours further, to get better and better and to advance your ability to self-critique, which we talked about earlier. When working by yourself, you won't have classmates to use as a frame of reference. You won't have them to ask for help or advice in learning specific techniques. Having classmates can be great for a bit of friendly competition, so you can build off of each other's strengths and skill sets, so you can all land that job at the end of the course. If you're going the self-taught route, you can still get textbooks and look at professionals in the industry for inspiration. You can read articles, watch videos and documentaries. Uh, surround yourself with hardworking and inspirational friends too. Anything you can do to gain that frame of reference, which you can then use to advance your career. Now, wrapping things up, regardless if you choose to go to fashion school or not, the important thing to know is that there is no singular path into fashion. Millions of people come from a variety of backgrounds to work in this industry, and there's no right or wrong way. Virgil Abloh was an architect. Christian Dior ran an art gallery. Giorgio Armani worked in a military hospital. The biggest names in fashion didn't just all come out of Central St. Martins and Parsons. It's okay to go to a small school or just teach yourself how to do all of this. Finding your own path and your own voice as a designer is the most important thing you can do. Having a perspective and a story to tell and developing the skills to back that up to turn it into a viable career is what you should be working on. Whether that's getting other people to make your designs come to life for you 
or if that's you sewing by hand until your fingers are bleeding because all you want to do is just work in the Dior Atelier making beautiful couture pieces. You should be working hard to achieve your goals no matter what they are because I guarantee you there's someone out there working harder. But through discipline, education, and a lot of persistence, you can forge your own path and your own story and have a fulfilling career. If you found value in this video, if this gave you a new perspective or helped you decide which route to take in your own journey, please subscribe and share this with a person you know who could also benefit from this information. Leave comments and questions so I can respond in future videos. And remember, your journey is unique and it's okay to change your mind. It took me a while to know exactly what I wanted to do, but now I'm working in the city I dreamt about and I couldn't be happier. I get to design clothes every day and help young designers on their journey into this tough industry. Make your own story. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.